What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. I'm Ruta the Null, your host, and today we're checking out some more Python tutorials. I'm going to open up Idle, and we can get to coding. Create a new project here. Save this as file.python. And we will quickly whip out our old skeleton that we use for every video because we like classes, we like object-oriented programming, and you know what? We like being able to not worry about importing our modules and that sort of thing. So we have to have these preliminary code. And I suppose I don't have to write it out each video, but you know, why not? It, it engraves it in my head, that's for sure. Okay, now we are set to go. Today I want to be talking to you guys about the SUM function. And that's S-U-M. And usually, when you have that built-in function, you would just pass in an, an array. You could have uh, 4, 5, maybe 1, and then 10. And it would return the sum of all the things that are inside that, uh, that list, or that array, or whatever you want to call it. And this is a really easy function. <laughs> I'm sure you can figure it out all by yourself. But in case, we'll, we'll go through a little walkthrough, and we'll see what we can do here. First of all, obviously, we're going to need to create a function. And we can get some. We can get some! <laughs> Go on, son! Get some! I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. Don't listen to me. And then, here we'll have the array. We'll pass that in. And then, for item in the array... First of all, let's set an integer variable, because we're going to need to be working with something like that. Sum equals zero, and then sum can plus or equal to uh, some number because if it's already a keyword, I don't want to bother with that. Some number plus equal item. And we can print. No, we don't want to print. We want to return that sum. I have an error defined. Oh, we do need to uh, do something in this, in this little constructor here. Let's just pass for now. So now we can just do... Actually, we don't even need to press. We can just run the, run the, run the function. Print out self dot uh, self dot get some. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't be giggling at that. Um, three, four, three, ten, twenty, ten again. Let's see what we got here. Get some takes exactly two arguments, and seven of them were given. Okay, yeah, this has to be an array. You can run that built-in function sum. Turn some number. I forgot the name of that variable, that's embarrassing. Now we have 50, this works exactly the way we want it to. We could add support for some strings if the type of the, uh, the type of the item is a string. We can just convert it. Item equals the integer form of the item. You can run that and everything's fine. What if we had only some of them? We no, some of these were strings. That should still be okay because it has that same sort of functionality to it. It's just looping through it and seeing if ones that are, they'll fix it and that sort of thing. So we should be all set. I wonder if the real sum function has a uh, has support for strings. It's worth a try, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you think? You can pass an array to it. Let's do uh, thirty, and then ten, and then ten. Let's see. What happens? No, we get an error. Unsupported operand types for int and string. Yep. It looks like they're trying to do that exact same thing we are, just adding to each other with the operands. So, in our case, we just tried to fix that in case it does pop up for strings. So, that's all for this tutorial. Some, finding the sum of a, of a list, that sort of thing, is very easy. Uh, I know it was a little fundamental, but hey, the more we know, the better. And uh, the more we're able to piece these ideas together with for loops and logic and that sort of thing, the uh, the more prosperous we will be in the long run. So uh, thank you guys for watching. It'd be cool if you could like the video, maybe leave me a comment, tell me what you think. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.